ZEISS has always been forefront leader in a lot of medical technology, especially in eye care, and they're doing the same thing with ultra-wide field photography now. Ultra-wide field has been around for a few years now. It's been getting more and more popular as time goes on. Claris is sort of, in my opinion, the newer generation of ultra-wide field. A lot of people are using it for two reasons. One, to just document pathology like you would with a standard fundus camera. And number two, sort of like as a screener before they actually look at a patient dilated fundus exam or sometimes actually in place of a dilated fundus exam. So you can use it for glaucoma, macular degeneration, you can catch retinal tears, any peripheral disease. A big thing in my practice is that I'm following patients for different diseases and I found that I really do need a fundus photo and an OCT on those patients, that one does not replace the other, they're really complementary. Having that correlation of how it looks or the coloration and versus actually seeing the actual tissue as a cross section has been very important for me in the management of my patients. With the Claris instrument, it's really true color. And what that gives you, it's really the way you see it in your patient, that's the way you're going to image it. So there's really no learning curve. The quality is actually better than previous cameras. They did ultra wide field photography, but you're also getting better images of the posterior pole. So something I really like is that the nerve almost never gets bleached out you're really getting clarity both in the posterior pole, the periphery, you're able to see really small hemorrhages, little microaneurysms perifoveally, and you're able to see these peripheral hemorrhages which we get a lot in diabetic retinopathy, which sometimes might be actually very difficult to see with just a standard dilated fundus exam. One thing that I really like about the Clara system is that there's a live feed if you're taking the image. So you're really able to see the retina and you're focusing on it. So if you need to look at a particular lesion, you can really just change fixation very quickly and go to that retinal location. Another great thing is because you do have a live feed, you're able to see, if it, is it in focus, is it out of focus? You don't really need to take like 10, 15 images sometimes to get one good image that you're actually going to use. And the big thing is that you're not bringing the patient to the instrument, you're bringing the instrument to the patient. There's gonna be a chin rest, you line the patient up at their temple, like we're all used to with basically almost every instrument we use. You don't really need to change the lighting in the background, so really just room lights, things like that. So you're really able to get great images. So the Claris instrument has two forms of audible reference. It has one which is a blue wavelength and one which is a green wavelength. The green wavelength is very useful for patients who have a cataract. I found that there's less image degradation with that type of image. The blue wavelength we found, it's been used a lot in research. So a lot of data out there right now is going off of that wavelength. It's been very useful for age-related macular degeneration. You're finding small changes. It's also a really good prognostic tool because as the autofluorescence changes, it might tell you things earlier on than OCT or your regular dilated fundus exam. I found it's very useful also for central serous because we used to think it was a unilateral disease and these sort of acute events that might accumulate, but now we're really finding out it's bilateral but asymmetric disease. Autofluorescence has really given me a peek into the actual function of the RPE and the retina in ways that I might not see when I dilated fundus exam, or sometimes even with OCT. So it's a great prognostic tool for that, because patients always ask me, is this gonna happen again? Am I gonna go blind? And this is really something that will help you give them a better answer than just, we have to wait. We're trying to prevent disease, not really just treat disease. And as time goes on, I think ultra-wide field is going to become really the standard and no one's really going to be using 45 or 60 degree fundus images anymore.